All right, what's going on? Today we're gonna to talk about fishing line. This is, to me, one of the things that I see people overlook the most. People get really dialed in on the rods, the reels, the lures, everything, even the hooks, the weights, everything they use. But people seem to overlook fishing line like it's just gonna be there. And today we're gonna to kinda of go through the properties and the characteristics of every different type of line and tell you exactly why I use it for every single application. So obviously I am sponsored by Sunline, so all these products are gonna be the products that I use from Sunline, but that's not really the purpose of this video just to show y'all you know, the sponsor product. The purpose of this video is to tell y'all exactly why I use every single line that I actually do use for every single application. So we're gonna jump right into it with the line that I like throwing the absolute most leave a comment now if you want to guess it i can guarantee you most of y'all are going to guess the type of line i like throwing the most it floats it's woven and it's got no stretch in it so whenever you set the hook you're moving the fish instantly so i keep all my braided line in the camo bag i keep a lot of braid with me probably more than most uh, other people that tour around and fish a lot but I like to change my braid quite a bit actually. I'm really particular about how I like for it to cast and perform. So I change my braid a lot more often than most people do. One thing about braid is, whenever you get a brand new fresh spool of braid, it'll have like, you know, the dye in it and a little bit of coating on it and stuff like that. Over time, obviously it, the color wears off of every single braid that there's ever been ever. And what'll happen is the braid will actually start to be woven a little bit less tightly over time it'll kind of expand a little bit and you can actually feel it in your cast whenever that braid has kind of got the coating wore off of it and it's kind of got a little bit more fluffy i don't know if that's scientifically proven but to me it feels like the braid just gets a little bit more fluffy whenever it loses all of its color and i really don't like the way it casts at that point so then i'll change my braid out you don't have to do that you can get you a marker and dye the end of it and it'll be fine and i do have a braid in here that keeps its color longer than any braid I've ever seen in my entire life and it has a very thick coating on it and that can go that's good for a couple of different things that coating is but I'm just trying to dial in let y'all understand exactly why I carry so much braid so the main two types I carry and I obviously carry 30 pound 50 pound 60 pound 18 pound 12 pound and that, that's pretty much all the sizes that I carry but I carry two main styles and two main different types of line i carry the sunline sx1 and what this is is this is actually a four strand braid so this braid is actually going to be a little bit more coarse to the touch you can actually probably if everybody's seen braid that's a four strand it's actually got some ridges in it it's actually a little bit more rough and coarse that doesn't make it any less strong or anything like that all it does is it's just a four carrier braid some people like the way it casts some people really like the way that it cuts through the vegetation i personally don't use this line a lot for punching and flipping in grass because of the noise whenever you're just going through the grass it really makes a really loud sawing noise the benefit to that is whenever you set the hook in the grass this more coarse more rough braid especially if you downsize to a smaller diameter will really cut through that that grass and make you a v all the way back to the boat where you can get the fish out with no obstructions at all so there is a benefit to using this braid for flipping and stuff like that but for me primarily i like to use this braid for throwing a frog throwing a swim jig throwing a buzz bait throwing you know i put it on a spinning rod a little bit but i prefer the x plasma for a spinning rod overwhelmingly but the reason i like this braid is because whenever it comes off the spool it's extremely limp whenever it's brand new and that's the thing about this braid is it has no coating on it at all so that means i'm going to get extremely consistent cast if i put if i take braid off and put brand new braid on the morning before a tournament i know exactly how this braid is going to cast because it has no coating on it so it's not going to have any variance to it whereas the x plasma braid which is this is like my spin reel i use the high vis the high vis green or whatever you want to call that the fluorescent this braid actually has and this is a 50 or 60 pound right here that's 30 pound actually so this is a 30 pound this braid actually has a, a pretty decent amount of coating on this braid it makes the braid braid extremely strong extremely abrasion resistance but whenever you wear use it for a long period of time the coating will actually wear off so whenever you take off some old x plasma braid and put on some new x plasma braid it's actually going to cast a little bit differently but if you want to put braid on one time all year and it lasts the entire year this is definitely the braid to go with because it has the coating on it and it's going to last for a while but for me like i said getting the consistency i like the one with a little bit less coating most of the sunline guys are throwing this x plasma that's the one they really like i have never broken this stuff it's extremely strong i just personally prefer 
no coating. So one more really good aspect of that, that's the braid I throw on a spinning rod. And the thing about it is having that coating on it, you get way less wind knots. So it seems like it keeps that braid to be, you know, woven super tight, the coating on it, and the braid never gets fluffy again. So that's what causes the wind knots when the braid gets extremely soft and extremely fluffy, it'll wrap up around itself. This braid, having this coating on it, seems to never get fluffy, and you can throw it on a spin rod, and I don't think I've ever had a wind knot throwing this braid. And everybody that's throwing braid on a spin rod has had a wind knot at some point time or another so that's the braid that's kind of what I do I do have a couple of little Japanese braids in here and stuff like that that I don't I've never even put them on a spool I, I've these are the two that I use all the time I've never tried the Japanese stuff but I have it in here just in case I get a wild hair and want to try some extremely high-end braid but I wouldn't tell people to go buy that because it costs so much you should stick with probably the two that are a little bit better price point the ones I showed you at first so braid bag we went through that I keep a lot of it in there, but it's just because I like to change line a lot. So this is my fluorocarbon bag right here. I keep tons of fluorocarbon. I keep way more fluorocarbon than braid because more reels take fluorocarbon. More applications need fluorocarbon. So the main ones that I use, I've actually already got them out in front, actually. So these are the bread and butter, two types of fluorocarbon. Oh, man. These are the bread and butter, two types of fluorocarbon from Sunline, obviously. This is the shooter and the sniper. Okay couple of big differences in these two number one the shooter is going to be a little bit more dense a little bit more coarse a little bit maybe coarse is not the right word because it's not rough to the touch but it's less manageable it doesn't bend as much it uh it doesn't get memory very bad at all but it doesn't it's not quite as supple straight off the spool this is the this is the fluorocarbon that i use 95% of the time I even crank with it. I'm probably the only person that Sunline, you know, works with that actually cranks with this line. Everybody else uses the sniper, but I feel like if you've got a stronger, more sensitive, more dense braid, I mean not braid, fluorocarbon, why wouldn't you use it for every single application? So that's why I stick with the shooter, but every, you know, brand has a higher end fluorocarbon that's more dense and, you know, more abrasion resistant and that's what this is. It's going to be like I said, a little bit harder to cast. You're not going to get quite as long of a distance on it, but you're going to have a little bit better longevity, better sensitivity, and better abrasion resistance. Now, this right here is kind of the everyday man's line. It's a lot more affordable. It's, it's also a lot easier to cast. So it's going to be a whole lot softer coming off the spool. It's going to cast a lot further. It's going to be a lot more manageable and feel better whenever you're casting it and winding it and all that type of stuff. I typically keep this in this bag for throwing crankbaits and stuff like that. Crankbaits, vibrating jigs, spinnerbaits, all that type of stuff. I'll throw it on this from time to time. So I keep 14 pound, 12 pound, 10 pound, 16 pound, stuff like that is what I keep. I don't really keep a lot of this in the 25 or the 20 pound because if I'm gonna be doing a hard hook set, flipping you know, a half ounce jig or something like that, I'm gonna be using the shooter almost exclusively. So that's basically the two different variations of the main types of fluorocarbon. Every single, you know, brand of fluorocarbon has a lower quality that's got a little more stretch and a higher quality with way less stretch. And that's what the shooter is, the one with way less stretch. So that's another spool of shooter. And one more thing that we have, this is actually a pretty new one. This is monofilament line that's only used for backing. So I personally like to use on the back of all my reels, I like to use braided line. And then I'll take the braided line and we'll cut it and tie fluorocarbon directly to the braided line. The reason I do that, braid is actually a lighter weight line than fluorocarbon or monofilament. So you're going to actually give yourself a lighter spool, which is going to have you make you do a little bit better cast, a little bit easier to skip and stuff like that because the braid on the core is actually a little bit lighter. But braid is also extremely expensive. So there is a Sokamaki never been able to pronounce that i've been i've asked how to pronounce it correctly backing line from sunline it's gonna be a lot more affordable that's monofilament and that's kind of what monofilament has been drawn back down to now with all the advancements in fluorocarbon and braid and stuff like that monofilament is now a backing line for most people the only time that i throw monofilament anymore is super small top water baits like a super small popping bait a super small prop bait something like that that's extremely small i'll still throw that on monofilament because the hooks that are on that bait are a little bit too light wire to throw on braid i feel like that i'm going to have a chance to bend them out even if i throw a super soft rod so any 
top water bait that I feel like the hooks will not bend out on braid, I'm gonna throw that on braid. So that's what monofilament has kind of been, you know, put in the back seat to be a backing reel. But I just wanted to run y'all through exactly why I choose the different types of line that I choose for every single situation. Like I said, the shooter, hard hook set, stuff like that. The sniper is gonna be a little bit better for casting and winding stuff around. And then the four strand braid seems to be a little bit more consistent to me on the cast. And the eight strand braid is definitely excels, punching and flipping and all that type of stuff. So that's the basic rundown. Hope y'all enjoyed that. I've got a lot of questions online and stuff like that. So just wanted to tell y'all the exact properties of all the line that makes me choose them. So hope y'all enjoyed it. Leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it and we'll see y'all in the next one.